Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another session of Learning with My Rabbis. It's a chance for me to share some of the teachers and people that have helped shape my own rabbinate, my own approach to Judaism. And tonight, I'm very pleased because we have our first guest who isn't officially a rabbi. His name is Rabba, Rabba Zalanki, a longtime musician, uh, playwright, too, uh, and many other things we'll get into in just a moment. But part of the idea of this series is to share with you people that have helped impact my own thinking and my own feelings towards Judaism. And Robbo was the song leader at the religious school I grew up with as a kid. And later on is the reason my brother and I got so into Jewish camping. And we went to J.C. Shalom because he was the song leader there in the summers where he's been for I don't know how many years. We'll get into that. And really was an entry point to Judaism for me through song and music and services and tefillah and all of that. So we're very excited, Robbo, to have you on with us today to share a little bit of yourself with my community here. Thank you so much. I'm so honored that you asked me, Lewis. It's so nice to see you. You were a great kid. I've known you since you were how old? Little. Elementary school. Early yeah. elementary school. You I don't know exactly. A very sweet little boy. And then he was my son's counselor. He's my son's favorite counselor ever. So it's very exciting. <laughs> Thank that you. Yeah. Thanks, Lewis. Thanks for having me, buddy. So to start, maybe you could just tell us a little about yourself and what was it growing up that brought you to, to music and to all of this? Sure. Um, I am, uh, well, first of all, I love baseball. This is six, six, four, three. Oh boy. Six, four, three, two for, you know what that means, Lewis? Six, four, three, two. I'm Double not a sports play. Guy. Double play. That's all right. Anyway, Montreal Expos, Toronto Blue Jays. Anyway, uh, so that's one thing. I love baseball. But uh, what brought me to uh, music was uh, my family. Uh, when I was a kid, my mom played the accordion and my dad uh, was a guitar player. And they used to, we used to go around the Chicago area and um, sing for all sorts of things, Hadassah groups and uh, uh, Mogan David and uh, Mogan David and uh, just wherever they wanted to hire us, we sang and that became kind of a thing uh, where we did it a lot. And um, when I was about 21 or so, I, was, uh, I got my degree in theater at Loyola of Chicago and uh, I went to work with my mother. Uh, she, was, she was teaching one day, she asked me to come along. So I sang the kids a couple of Yiddish songs because you know I had that whole, uh, catalog of stuff in my head from when I was a kid. And so uh, the kids really liked it. And uh, the rabbi hired me to work at the other branch. So my mom worked at one branch and I worked at the other. And it was a pretty good gig for a struggling uh, Chicago actor because, you know, it paid well and it was more than anything was so rewarding. And I loved, I loved the kids. I had never really done anything like that before. And uh, that job led to them inviting me to a camp in Wisconsin to song lead for the weekend. Uh, Camp Shy in, in Lake Delton, Wisconsin, which was, it was amazing. I had, uh, everybody took to me really well. And I realized, I think that I kind of wanted to stick with that kind of life. It was, it was, it was really nice. And, uh, and Lake Delton, that one weekend led to me working at Camp Shy as the song leader. And, and I've been at JCA Shalom now for 20, I think it'll be my 20s. Well, this should have been my 25th or 26th summer, but because of COVID, you know, things are different. But um, I love it. And so I, I do other things too, but um, I love the, the, the Jewish song leading is, I have a lot of passions, but it's right up there. It's right up there. <laughs> Nothing like it. What is it about music that lends itself so well just to, to Jewish education? Because oh. I, I see kids going crazy at song session, the Ruach and the spirit. And it's such a meaningful experience as a camper, as a counselor. What is it that, that music does that's so much better than a classroom? Uh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, you know, you told me uh, beforehand that we would talk about things like that. And I brought my guitar and I said, if I need it, I can almost show you. I feel like I can show you. There's something about, well, first off, uh, Bill Kaplan, who runs the Shalom Institute, he always calls it my song sessions, Jewish exuberance. And uh, I'm not sure how that ties into your question exactly, but there's something about music that just gets into your soul and your blood. It's been like that for, you know, thousands of years, you know, all, all different cultures. There's something about music that just excites one's spirit. And, um, you know, if the stories are good and if it's fun and if it's funny and if it's got a good beat, you know, 
people enjoy that. And uh, I enjoy it too. I'll show you what I mean in terms of, I might as well. I'm not going to do the whole thing, Lewis, but please, please. All right. So I, I wrote, well, you could edit it down. <laughs> it's only three minutes. So this is a song I wrote called Tower of Babel. And so you asked, why would music be such a great teaching tool? It's because you're telling a story in a song and you bring humor into it. And uh, there's something different about just reading it. Uh, and not that there's anything wrong with reading it, because I love reading stories, but um, there's something different. It gives, gives it a different element. So here's Tower of Babel. Once I thought I was so fine, I bragged almost. Oh, I'm going to turn on my original sound, so I don't, there we go. Once I thought I was so fine, I bragged almost all the time. The people in my town, they all bragged too. Our city, it was called Shinar. We thought that we could go so far. We knew that we were much better than you. To show our greatness and our power, we tried to build an awesome tower. We thought that we could be like God, you see. We gave up all good things in life, our husbands, children, and our wives. But God stopped our little building spree. You remember this, Lewis? Ich kapipus brechen block. Can you understand my talk? Es ma sugar zoinger foo. Do you hear my words to you? Drake up korvu pelumbo. Where did my nice language go? Elevator gorgi as our towers turned into a mess. I can't just rat that building bonita palabunya, particularly when he puts only the cup in the porridge. Oy vey. And it goes on from there. Anyway, but that's the idea, you know, when you tell a story in a song, a familiar story, or even not a familiar story, there's just something about it that speaks louder than just words. It's great, it's great, it's great, because it's, it's, it's educational, it has the story, but you all sing along, it stays in your memory, and even years later, it's been years since I've been to camp, I still remember that song and so many others uh, from... I don't know if it was your first album or early on. I remember it was uh, part of a chain and you had that. Mm -hmm. There's another song, Kol Yisrael, Aravim Zela Zel, all of Israel's Connected. These songs, they, decades later, they stayed with me, their meaning and their message, which is, is wonderful. Yeah. Actually, I have it's awesome. uh, my autographed copy of that album. I no way, I look along. at that. <laughs> I'm a very proud, proud you owner. You flatter me. That is so nice what you said. I love that my song stuck with you, you know, and all the songs, st stuff that I haven't written, all that stuff that we've done at camp. I mean, do you remember the dance but, for part of a chain? I do. I do. <laughs> I am a part of a chain with the Made eye and, and everything. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, it's the best. I'm but, thinking now, right, it's fairly obvious with young kids, I think, that music is a great way. But with teens, it's always so hard as an educator to connect with them. That's what every synagogue's worried about. How do we keep our teens involved? Um, every rabbi, every Jewish educator is worried about how do I connect with teens? And then you walk into the song session at camp, and it's not just you playing songs for, for little children. You have 18, 19, 20-year-olds even jumping up and down, singing at the top of their lungs to to these songs, which is, is an incredible feat that music has that way of connecting just throughout the generations. You're absolutely right. And as you're saying this to me, I had a thought. It could be totally wrong. I don't know. I'm just kind of brainstorming it. When I sing at Hebrew school, I've, I work at several Hebrew schools, and I, that's another thing. I love teaching music to those kids. But what I find is, you know, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, excellent, sixth, good, very good, seventh, start losing them, eighth, no interest whatsoever, ninth, I don't even see them really too much. Uh, so here's, I, I wonder sometimes, I direct plays for a living and a lot, and I do it in middle school. That's one of the things I do for a living. I do it in a middle school and I have sixth, seventh and eighth graders. And I have my friends say to me, middle school kids, they don't care about this stuff. I mean, how, how do you uh, even keep their interest? Well, if I did it for the whole middle school, they wouldn't care about it. But I get the 80 kids out of the 600 who really want to be there. So I get this incredible enthusiasm. And I think camp might be that. I think camp might be that. You're getting the kids who really want to be a part of it. That makes sense. I never thought of that before in my life. That's a first. But... It does. It does. But yeah. even at camp, right, you have the kids. I remember as a counselor how hard it was to get my bunk to participate in arts and crafts or Israeli scouts or in things like that. But song session, it was rarely an issue. 
There was something yeah. about the Ruach and the community and all of it. I actually have an easier time with the older kids at camp than the younger kids at camp. It's like reversed from, from, from a religious school. Because the older kids really they know it all and they're you know they request everything but the younger kids are new i find it harder to get them into song session than the older kids but eventually you know they do uh and hopefully uh but it's uh it's interesting how it flips that way i never thought of it like i said when i was looking around your website i saw some some things about yiddish um, is that a language that you grew up speaking? Is it spoken in the home or? Not, you know, my mom is at a nursing home. I, I live in, you're, you're talking to me in Memphis. I live in LA and Memphis, uh, California and Memphis, but I, since COVID, I've gone back home to Memphis. Uh, and my mom's in the nursing home out here. And just yesterday I said to her, I never do it. I just said, okay, I flipped her mama. And I was like, whoa, did I just speak? <laughs> Did I just say I love you, mom, in Yiddish? Yes, I did. I, I know little things, and I didn't even think about it. It was weird. It was cool. But yeah, you know, I, I have a, I won't do this one for sure, but do you remember, remember this one, Louis? Romania, 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 Romania. Siga bene, malalanda, zizia, hashene. Dort zu weinen is a fargenigen. Was das hart gesehen, du kennst de kriegen. Anyway, uh, so it was the music, you know. I love it. I love it. Our Hazen actually is from Romania. And all I remember is the words in the chorus, so I, I sing that to him. Um, he won't let me participate in the choir here. The last choir I was in was your Friday night choir. My voice isn't up to uh, par here, um, which is fair. I'm, uh, I went into the rabbinate so that I could speak as opposed to, to sing. Well, you were but... a really smart, good speaker, so you found your area. That's cool. That's cool. But I appreciate that. Um, is there a Jewish idea in particular, like to ask all my guests, some idea that's really impacted your life, a Jewish value that you try to live by or a concept, something that's just stayed with you in a significant way? I, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. Uh, I was reading out recently uh, about recycling and how, um, you know how important it is and if everybody would do something and uh, and uh, you know I, I often think about how uh, not often but I sometimes think about how th this I think it was in I, I'm bad at verses but I think it might be Leviticus uh, about uh, the land is not yours is that right Lewis uh oh uh -oh, putting uh -oh, me on uh -oh. the spot now <laughs> yeah it's okay <laughs> No, it's in one of the five books. We'll it was one on of the that. five books. It's one of five books. And it's just, God said, you know, you have to take care of the land, but it's not yours. He said, you know, it's, it's mine. And, um, you know, no matter what your belie belief is, if, you know, some people believe in God, some people don't believe in God. Either way, it's not ours necessarily. It's the next generations of the next generation. And I think about that a lot. And, uh, you know, I try to be very environmental. Uh, do not always succeed. Uh, I, sh I should do better. Uh, I'm not even sure. Yeah, that's a big one. You know, being kind to the stranger, especially we have things going on in our country that you, from which you used to hail. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I understand uh, mine, but I also very much understand the concept of sharing and how important it is. And uh, reaching out and not being, not being all about holding on to what's ours, but perhaps I think the, the, the way to live a better, I think the key for us probably for humanity is to kind of reach out to each other and not to take. And uh, I don't know how that happens, you know, uh, but uh, those things are important to me. They, I think about them a lot. And of course, lech lecha. <laughs> I, I think it's a great message, and I mean, it's something I remember very much from camp. I'm going back again to that song, Kol Yisrael Arvim Zelazet, that we're all connected. Uh, but it's not just Israel, it's all of us, right? Every Jew is a special connection to our fellow Jews, but the whole world's connected. And yeah. camp just seems to be that special microcosm where you really feel it as we would put our arms around each other and sing those kinds of songs on Friday night, and you just uh -huh. felt that that I'm connection. Much, I'm so sad. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to you as if we're one-on-one. -on -one. I'll tell everybody, it's so hard to not have camp this summer. Uh, these kids, they're so good. And my son works there. He's a unit head and, and he's so good. And, and, and the staff, and we meet these young people from Israel and from England and the, the way we're so connected to each other. This is a, you know, we'll get through it. Everybody gets through it. You know, God willing, we get through it. But uh, it's hard. It's hard. There's nothing like that, is there? 
Absolutely. We had a, another episode with a camp director on and it's, this is gonna be a tough summer for, for so many teens and so many staff members. And yeah, even me, I have my contract. I get a week at the camp Vermont here in Canada every summer. Why don't you come and to us? I mean, that's great for Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I, I get it because we have a lot of kids that from the synagogue that go to this camp. Be, but selfish, it's it's going to be my first summer not spending even a day at a summer camp, which is going to be very tough for me in decades, decades. God, I know. Um, so I, I feel it too, Robbo. Yeah, but... Um, just as we're, as we're wrapping up, I'm just thinking uh, one more question I had kind of because you talked about you do these plays and things with kids during the year, separate kind of from the Jewish music. Yes. But how does your Judaism kind of impact what you do elsewhere and the plays you write and the programs and projects you work on? Do you feel like that's impacted you in ways or? I, am, I I've never thought about that one either, but I would say... Look, I've worked in the Jewish field for so long, the Jewish field, whatever you say, working with kids and uh, um, being, I do creative stuff with them in terms of theater too. I've written a lot of uh, spoofs like the Tzedakah fairies about a little kid who realized, uh, a little kid who meets his older self and he's, his younger self is so, so, um, so selfish. And his older self says, you know, you ruined my life, kid. So that's the Tzedakah fairies. They come and they change his life. So I did a lot of, done a lot of that. Uh, I have a play called Judah Mickey B. So it's basically, uh, it's um, the Hanukkah story to Disney stuff. Like, gonna send those Jews away because we are ferocious. Gonna send those Jews. So I've done that for years. And then I just bring it, you know, if I'm doing, if I'm directing Grease or The Wiz or The Music Man, it's the same thing in terms of working with kids. You Even at, at camp I feel like you have to be really positive and I have had and and I think that's I don't know if it's a Jewish value or a human value or both but there's a certain positivity that you have at camp you can't I can't um you know hit your mark you're not in your light you know that's not and so and I've, I've worked with directors when I was a kid in high school and junior high who were so good but some who were I thought maybe they didn't think about the value of people's feelings. So uh, that's what I bring to the secular world when I do my uh, directing. I've written a couple of musicals. Uh, one of them just got published. Uh, it's called Suddenly Someone, and it's about a little boy who uh, named Michael Hope, who uh, the bullies call hopeless all the time. And he's got it really rough in school, and his father has kind of his, not kind of the father has abandoned him and he and he's got blessings but he doesn't feel them and he ends up uh singing at a talent show and he goes viral and it changes his life but and he becomes suddenly someone but there's something about first off just the rehearsal process everything i do at camp i try to be super positive at school with the kids i'm always i i i'm not saying i don't make mistakes and don't get sarcastic sometimes i do i catch it pretty quickly and i apologize for it really quickly that's what i learned at camp uh you know just to not be that way if i can and i am not perfect i'm not trying to give the impression that i am but it's something that i work on uh but uh the idea of suddenly someone at the end of it uh, he he discovers that he was always blessed, and he didn't need this miracle, uh, this mir this YouTube miracle, really. But whatever you, the miracle, it was like a stroke of lightning that made him the celebrity, and he realizes that he never needed that. That it was always around him. That he had his family and his friends, and there's something about that that's a Jewish value to just appreciate our blessings, because uh, you know we forget. You know, every day I've got these three wonderful children, Zoe, Elijah, the one who loves you, and uh, Jacob, and I forget how lucky I am sometimes, and I have to stop and just say, thank you. You know, we have to remember our blessings. I have to remember my blessings, and I guess that th th those are some of the values in my writing and in the way I approach the directing part of it. Was that too verbose? That was perfect. Um, when you were saying it, I was thinking about in the Amidah every day, there's a prayer we say that thanks God for our daily miracles, which feels in a way like an oxymoron, a daily miracle. A miracle is something special. It's a sea parting. It's something that is once in a lifetime, maybe once in a millennia, not daily. But Judaism really tells us that we should remember those daily things, those things that really matter, our family, our friends, our community. Um, and at the same time, we're people of hope, which is uh, also what I kind of heard in that play, that this kid, things are not going so well, but... He's reason. got hope. He's not really hopeless. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's um, right. Also like Bob Hope. 
that's for your 90 year old viewers. Today, that, that message is the world looks the way it does in so many different areas. Um, that message of hope, I think, is, is so important for all of us to remember. So I love it. Yeah. Um, a final thought I wanted to, to sh- just share with you. Um, one of the things that has stayed with me in my own rabbinate that I try to do, and I also make mistakes and don't always do it so well, but I got from you. So I remember as a kid when when I would run into you in the, um, walking across camp or it's not, anywhere it was, you made me feel like I was the only one that mattered. And as I got older, I watched you do that to so many other kids. And I love that. I didn't hurt my feelings that I learned that that's just how you are. You're a hundred percent with the person in front of you. And I know I'm not great at it. I have times I'm looking at my phone still, or I'm worried about this or that in my head, but it's always stayed with me is what that felt like to have your full attention and presence. And in my own rabbit, I've tried to give that to my community, my congregants, the kids I work with. So I really want to thank you for that. That's about the nicest um, that I've heard uh, in a long time. And I, you know, people say a lot of nice things, but that was really nice. You know, uh, I, you were special, and everybody is, and they, I feel like that about them. So I'm anyway. That means a lot to me. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for for taking the time to be on our little program with us, and thank you to everybody for watching. We'll see you again next week with another guest, another teacher, a mentor, somebody that's impacted my own life, and it's such a joy to get to share you um, with my community. So thank you, Rabbo. No. Thank you, Rabbi Lewis. I really appreciate it. If you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he 